I will say that is one thing I really admire about Star Wars is that it's set in the past because all other sci-fi is set in the future. Why is sci-fi fantasy better than all other genres? Wow. Um, <laughs> so this is like extremely my subjective personal opinion because I know there's people out there like my mother who are like, I hate sci-fi. She hates sci-fi and fantasy. Like anytime... I'm like, let's try this show. It's so far. Um, she gets so upset because she's like, I just, it's not relatable to me. Personally, I like the genre the best because it's a way of handling serious subject matter without being preachy. Um, especially sci-fi, you know, you get to like drop people into a fictitious world that is critiquing the way our real life society might be acting behind the scenes but in a little bit more, like I'm thinking like Squid Game, right? Squid Game to me is like sci-fi for sure. Um, slow burn sci-fi, spoiler alert, sorry everybody, but um, definitely like a, a game where everyone is kind of killing each other, but it's a more brutal version than like the Hunger Games. That's, that's a commentary on how our system pits us against each other. Again, going back to that competitiveness, going back to that form of capitalism. Um, sci-fi and fantasy allow you to say, okay, I don't have to think about my daily life. You get to just enjoy this fun story. But behind the scenes of the story is this little like, hey, maybe think about this, incepting your mind. And then you're like, Ooh, that's relatable. Hmm, let me think about that. Why? Why is this movie bringing up these strong emotions? Why is this book bringing up these feelings in me? Um, I mean, I really do think that a lot of genre is about taking a break from our day-to-day -day world, even comedy, right? Comedy may look like our world, it's just that the stakes are like stupidly high, right? Like I'm like, the toast wasn't buttered! And people are like, ah, that's such a silly way to act. But like, yeah, no one, really rarely do people do that in life. And if you saw it in real life, it would probably scare the bejesus out of you because you're like, why are you having such a big feeling? All of those different genres allow us to escape. And when we've escaped our world, people are more open-minded to actually think critically about our world. Do you think sci-fi gets the respect it deserves? Uh, this is probably an example of me living in a bit of a bubble. Because <laughs> I, I interact with a lot of people who like sci-fi and they're all like, yeah, sci-fi is great. So, you know, I probably can't comment objectively, but um, I would hope it does. I mean, I think, you know, just thinking especially out of the past decade, like, or the past hundred years, like things that have come and gone, there's, um, there's sci-fi that have greatly influenced the people. You know, stuff that's stayed in our public conscious. There's, there's quotes that are misattributed to people that come from sci-fi. So yeah, I would say it's doing great as a genre. What are some tropes that we want to see in a sci-fi film? Boy, it's interesting. You know, I feel like in the past decade and a half, um, every sci-fi movie is starring a heroine these days, which I love, like seeing strong female characters, like, yeah, I love this. Um, but it almost is like tropey to the, I mean, I would say the tropes are just like a lot of the beats in the story. Um, so I was talking, to, uh, no offense to Star Wars, I love Star Wars a lot, but Star Wars comes to mind. I was talking to somebody about it recently and how, um, you know, with Star Wars, it's like almost every single IP is now like, the rebels are rebelling, right? <laughs> and I'm like, I feel like we're in a galaxy and we have seen that story. And I, I think there's more to this galaxy than the rebels are rebelling, right? Like I want to see a story that is not about that. Or like I was, I had this crazy pitch, which, um, you know, someone go steal this pitch, please. I'm like, what if you had a cooking show, right? And it's like, Hey, we're going to learn different like recipes from the galaxy. And it's like an obviously alien person, like teaching you these things. And it's stuff that you can make at home because you're a star Wars fan and you're watching it. But in the background of the show, you can tell that like a rebellion is starting. And then towards the end, you almost have like a fourth wall break and a total genre shift as you're dropped into another universe. Like that would be something like what WandaVision did, which I'm going to just say WandaVision is sci-fi. I'm making that claim now. Um, I loved WandaVision. I'm not the biggest Marvel person, but that one really was like, whoa, for me, because they 
took the tropes out. They, they boldly told a story that I have not seen told before, which is interesting because when you think about like sci-fi literature, there's really weird stuff out there, right? Like there's, um, tender is the flesh is an example of a story where it's like, oh my God, that's a horrifying universe that I never want to think about. Um, or I have no mouth, but I must scream, right? Like sci-fi literature is so original to the point of like, where did your mind come up with this? Like, what are, what are you working through that now I am being subjected to this? But for some reason in film, we kind of lean on the same tropes of like, well, I'm just a girl living in this world that's kind of janky and I'm being subjected to the injustices of the system and oh my God, I found myself. I don't want to be a hero. I'm just a normal girl. I am leading the people. I feel like I have seen this movie so many times recently. Um, it is the backbone of so much film sci-fi. And again, I'm like, so other stories out there. And I want to keep seeing strong female characters. I want to keep seeing a lot of the cool um, kind of more inclusionary stuff that we're seeing in modern sci-fi. I feel like the story beats could have a refresh and people would be like, thank you. I don't need another superhero film. I'm sorry for everybody who loves them. I'm like, what if we didn't do that? <laughs> we told a different story in that universe, you know? I like the cooking idea, by the way. That'd thank be, you. That'd be really cool. It'd be really fun and it would be, it would be able to touch like it would, it would be super niche, but I think in a way that would attract more fans, they would get one thing out of it and then it would be like psh, genre break and then all of a sudden it ends in a different way. Also letting shows end, that's a nice thing. Like being like, we've gotten to the end. We're not making another, se it's the end. The mini series is a great vehicle that I think we should all embrace more, <laughs> you know? Is there one series that you wish didn't end? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to say it. I deeply love the show Merlin. I think a lot of people find it to be like extremely corny. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. It was a BBC show. It feels like originally it was branded for children or like young adults. It's lovely. I am so sad that it ended. I think it really, the character arcs were so compelling because everybody is aged down like Arthur and Merlin and um, Morgana and what's her face, the Guinevere are all like really young and are all just people who are existing and you know what their big story beats are gonna be, but you can see how like they subvert it. I think it's just, it's a really brilliantly crafted show and I'm very sad that it ended. I didn't want it to end. Which sci-fi movie made you fall in love with the genre? Wow, what an interesting question. Oh no, what made me fall in love with the genre? I have to, okay, now we have to think back to Baby Sheba and I'm, I don't, I, it's really actually hard for me to say what is the first sci-fi that I encountered. I, it's one of those things are just because of like the content that my father likes. It's just, it was always around me, sci-fi and fantasy, you know? And then of course there's Disney. And so di growing up as a Disney child, um, I, it was always around me. But in terms of like the first time that I was like, ooh, this genre, you know, it was when the post-apocalyptic thing really kicked off. Um, and there was, it's like the Hunger Games did really well. And all of a sudden there was all of this like YA literature where it's like, we're in love and <laughs> America's burning. And it was like this whole thing. Um, I don't know. It's just like the first, I, I remember, I don't remember which book it was, but I just, I remember seeing a book or seeing a film and being like, whoa, that's a really different way to think about the world. And there's like a specificity that the sci-fi genre uses that other people don't use. And then I remember starting to see indie sci-fi and how it really reflected sort of like the darker aspects of sci-fi that you see traditionally in literature. And that's when I really was like, whoa, this is, you know, like for, especially for filmmaking and indie filmmaking, like low budget, high concept stuff where it's like, wow, I am extremely disturbed by the story that I've just experienced, but it's getting me to think about things that I would never think about otherwise. So that's when like, I guess, in young adulthood and adulthood is when it really like, I caught the bug and started to really see um, the value of it. 
thinking critically about what our future could look like, you know? I will say that is one thing I really admire about Star Wars is that it's set in the past because all other sci-fi is set in the future. So the day that I realized Star Wars was set in the past was the day that my mind exploded. I didn't realize that it was set in the past. <laughs> but yeah, I am. Um, I Star Wars I actually didn't see until a couple of years ago. That was something that I came into in my adulthood. But um, I couldn't even, t I literally couldn't even tell you what's the thing that set it off. It's just, I started thinking critically about what I was watching and it got me excited. <laughs> I know I really am affected by a film or literature or art when I like really fixate it and just want to talk about it all the time. Then I'm like, huh, interesting. This has had an effect on me. Um, and yeah, I guess like going to conservatory in New York, I was exposed to a lot of unique ways of telling stories. And I know that that was, and that was probably where everything connected. Now you got me on memory lane. <laughs>